Marple Annex 1, Oil. Regulations for the prevention of pollution by oil came into force on 2 October 1983. This annex details the discharge requirements for the prevention of pollution by oil and oily materials. Types of spills. Oil spill can happen either due to operations or due to casualties. Operations spills. Pipeline leakage. Tank overflow. Hull leakage. Spill resulting from casualties. Grounding. Fire. Explosion. Collision with fixed or moving object. Hull failure. Excessive list. Containment system failure. Submerged, founded. Wreck, stranded. Hazardous vapor. Special area as per Marple Annex 1. Mediterranean Sea. Baltic Sea. Black Sea. Red Sea. Gulfs. Area. Gulf of Aden. Antarctic area. Northwest European waters. Oman area of the Arabian Sea. Southern South African waters. As per Marple Annex 1 Chapter 5 Regulation 37 Shipboard Oil Pollution Emergency Plan, SOPEP. Every oil tanker of 150 gross tonnage and above and every ship other than an oil tanker of 400 gross tonnage and above shall carry shipboard oil pollution emergency plan, SOPEP. It should be approved by administration. Such a plan shall be prepared based on guidelines developed by the organization. It should be written in the working language of the ship. Purpose of SOPEP, Emergency Response Plan. The purpose of the plan is to provide guidance to the master and officers on board the ship with respect to the steps to be taken when an oil pollution incident has occurred or is likely to occur. SOPEP should be reviewed at least annually, to reflect changes in legislation, contact details, vessel equipments and changes in company procedure. Contents of SOPEP. Ship's particulars, general information of ship. Name of owners. On board reporting requirements and procedures, in case of oil spill is described. The action plan contains the duty of each crew member at the time of the spill, including emergency muster and actions. It contains the inventory of the SOPEP material and location of SOPEP locker. Addressees of national and local contacts to be notified in the event of spill. Authorities, like port state control, oil cleanup team etc. to contact and reporting requirements in case of oil spill are listed in SOPEP. Steps and procedure to contain the discharge of oil into the sea using SOPEP equipments. SOPEP includes drawing of various fuel lines, along with other oil lines on board vessel with positioning of vents, save all trays etc. General arrangement of ship is also listed in SOPEP, which includes location of all the oil tanks with capacity, content etc. Below drawings should be added in SOPEP for easy reference for the master and other ship staff in case of an oil spill. General Arrangement Plan Tank Plan Capacity Plan Fuel Oil Piping Diagram Port Contact List List of specific contact details should be prepared for each port visit and with displayed on bridge and cargo control room. List of specific contact details should contain at least contact details of the following. DPA or the Operator Emergency Contact Details. Details the Port Authorities. The Vessel P and I Club. The Agent. National Pollution Reporting Center. Additional contact details required by the USCG Whistle Response Plan when trading in U.S. waters. All oil tankers of 5,000 tons deadweight or more shall have prompt access to computerized shore-based damage stability and residual structural strength calculation programs. Oil Record Book has two parts. Part 1. Machinery Space Operations. Every oil tanker of 150 GT and above and every ship of 400 GT and above other than an oil tanker should have all Part 1. Part 2. Cargo, Ballast Operations. Every oil tanker of 150 GT and above shall be provided with all Part 2. It should be kept readily available for inspection at all reasonable times and shall be preserved for a period of three years after the last entry has been made. Entries shall be made in English, French or Spanish. Entries to made in Oil Record Book Part 1. Ballasting or cleaning of oil fuel tanks. Discharge of dirty ballast or cleaning water from oil fuel tanks. Collection and disposal of oil residues, sludge and other oil residues. Discharge overboard or disposal otherwise of bilge water which has accumulated in machinery spaces, and Bunkering of fuel or bulk lubricating oil. Entries of oil record book part 2. Loading of oil cargo. Internal transfer of oil cargo during voyage. 
unloading of oil cargo, ballasting of cargo tanks and dedicated clean ballast tank, cleaning of cargo tanks including crude oil washing, discharge of ballast except from segregated ballast tanks, discharge of water from slop tank, closing of all applicable valves or similar devices after slop tank discharge operation. Closing of valves necessary for isolation of dedicated clean ballast tanks from cargo and stripping lines after slop tanks discharge operations. Disposal of residues. Accidental discharge. Any failure of oil discharge monitoring and control system. Marple Annex 1 discharge criteria machinery spaces, inside special area. Any discharge into sea of oil or oily mixture from ships of 400 gross tonnage and above shall be prohibited except when all the following conditions are satisfied. The ship is proceeding en route. The oily mixture is processed through an oil filtering equipment meeting the requirements of Regulation 14.7 of this Annex. Regulation 14.7 requires oil filtering equipment to have an alarm and automatic stopping device when oil contain exceeds 15 ppm. The oil content of the effluent without dilution should not exceed 15 parts per million. The oily mixture does not originate from cargo pump room bilges on oil tanker. The oily mixture in case of oil tanker is not mixed with oil cargo residue. With respect to Antarctic area, any discharge into the sea of oil or oily mixture from any ship shall be prohibited. Marple Annex 1 Discharge Criteria Machinery Spaces Outside Special Area as per Regulation 15 of Marple Annex 1, any discharge into sea of oil or oily mixture from ships of 400 gross tonnage and above shall be prohibited except when all the following conditions are satisfied. The ship is proceeding en route. The oily mixture is processed through an oil filtering equipment meeting the requirements of Regulation 14 of this Annex. The oil content of the effluent without dilution should not exceed 15 parts per million. The oily mixture does not originate from cargo pump room bilges on oil tanker. The oily mixture in case of oil tanker is not mixed with oil cargo residue. Marple Annex 1 Discharge Criteria, Cargo Spaces, Inside Special Area. Discharge is prohibited. Marple Annex 1, Discharge Criteria, Cargo Spaces, Outside Special Area. The tanker is not in special area. The tanker is more than 50 nautical miles from the nearest land, from baseline. The tanker is proceeding en route. The instantaneous rate of discharge of oil content does not exceed 30 liters per nautical miles. The total quantity of discharge into sea does not exceed for tanker delivered. On or before 31 December 1979 is 1 by 15,000 of the total quantity of the particular cargo. After 31 December 1979 is 1 by 30,000 of the total quantity of the particular cargo. Tanker has in operations oil discharge. Monitoring control system and a slop tank arrangement. Definition of en route. En route means that a ship meets the following conditions. Is underway at sea. Is on a course or courses, including deviation from the shortest direct route, which, as far as practicable for navigation will cause any discharge to be spread over as great an area of the sea as is reasonable and navigationally practicable. Slop tanks. Oil tankers of 150 gross tonnage and above shall be provided with slop tank arrangements. In oil tankers delivered on or before 31 December 1979, any cargo tank may be designated as a slop tank. Adequate means shall be provided for cleaning the cargo tanks and transferring the dirty ballast residue and tank washings from the cargo tanks into a slop tank approved by the administration. The total capacity of the slop tank or tanks shall not be less than 3% of the oil carrying capacity of the ship. Oil tankers of 70,000 tons deadweight and above delivered after 31 December 1979, shall be provided with at least two slop tanks. Certificates as per Marple Annex 1. International Oil Pollution Prevention Certificate shall be issued to any oil tanker of 150 GT and above and any other ships of 400 GT and above which are engaged in voyages to ports or offshore terminals under the jurisdiction of other parties to the present convention. Such certificate shall be issued or endorsed by administration or by or class authorized by it. Few Sire 2.0 Observations. SOPEP was not found on board. SOPEP was not updated with national contact list and other information. Port-specific contact list was not prepared. 
vessel if using e-oil record book. No documents or authorization from flag or class was found. On board there was no facility of backup and recovery of data where electronic oil record book was used. Accompanying officer was unfamiliar with content of SOPEP. Interviewed officer or rating was unfamiliar with duties WRT to spill. SOPEP drill scenarios were unrealistic. SOPEP drill scenarios did not cover operation spills both cargo or bunker operation. Spill drill dates were not consistent with vessel activities when checked with deck log book. Spill drill was overdue or has not been completed as per drill planner. Company was not informed if spill drill was deferred due to sea condition or poor weather. No communication with company was found on board if spill drill was deferred due to sea condition or poor weather. The officers on board was not familiar with the company procedure for maintaining ORB Part 1 and Part 2 as per Marple and Flag requirement. The officers on board was not familiar with the entries to be made in ORB Part 1 and Part 2. Entries in the oil record book Part 2 were not accurate record of cargo operations. Recorded operations that were in violation of Marple Annex 1. Entries in the ORB Part 2 did not record all cargo latest operations required to be recorded by Marple. Entries in the ORB Part 2 were not signed by the officer in charge of each operation. Entries in the ORB Part 2 were not verified and signed by master on completion of each pages. Entries in the ORB Part 2 were not supported by a receipt or a certificate which when was wash water was disposed to reception facility. Entries in the ORB Part 2 were not corrected in manner as required by company. Discharge of water from the slop tank into the sea had not been recorded in Marple Annex 1. No crude oil washing was done before ballast water was loaded in cargo tank, S, after the carriage of crude oil. No entries were made in ORB Part 1 about oil filtering equipment regarding its failure or out of service. No entries were made in ORB Part 2 about ODMCS, regarding its failure or out of service. Pollution incident was recorded in ORB Part 1 or Part 2. Where a vessel was an oil chemical. Carrier. Marple Annex 2 cargo operation has been entered in Orb Part 2 rather than in the cargo record book. Amendment to Marple Annex 1. Use of electronic record books. Refer MEPC 312 and 314, on or after 1 October 2020. Guidelines regarding use of electronic record books for Marple Annex 1, 2. 5, 6 and as well as the NOx technical code can be used after flag or class approval were also issued. Watertight doors. Adopted by MEPC 78. In force from, the 1st of January 2024. In relation to watertight doors. Protecting seas in the Arctic. Adopted by MEPC 79. Amendments to Marple Annex 1, 2, 4, 5, 6 and in force from the 1st of May 2024. Regional arrangements for port reception facilities, amendments to the Marple annexes to allow states with ports in the Arctic region to enter into regional arrangements for port. Reception facilities, prohibition on use and carriage of HFO in Arctic waters, adopted by MEPC 76, in force from 1 July 2024. The prohibition will cover the use and carriage for use as fuel of oils having a density at 15 degrees Celsius higher than 900 kg per meter 3 or a kinematic viscosity at 50 degrees Celsius higher than 180 square millimeters per second. Ships engaged in securing the safety of ships, or in search and rescue operations, and ships dedicated to oil spill preparedness and response would be exempted. Ship which can comply on and after the 1st of July 2029. Ships which meet certain construction standards with regard to oil fuel tank protection. A party to Marple with a coastline bordering Arctic waters may temporarily waive the requirements for ships flying its flag while operating. Thanks for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe this video among your friends and colleagues. Join our Telegram channel for latest maritime updates and exams preparations.